The opening of the Aga Khan Center is a tangible symbol of His Highness's commitment to the advancement of knowledge through education and a long-standing interest in architecture and the quality of the built environment. The opening comes during the period in which we are marking the Diamond Jubilee of His Highness's accession as Imam of the Shia Ismaili Muslims. The Ismaili Imams have had a long tradition of championing scholarship dating back to the founding of Al-Azhar University in Cairo over a thousand years ago. We've been operating in London for 40 years now and for some time we've been thinking about having a permanent building of our own and ideally one that we could design and build from scratch that would have something of our own identity in the architecture. The Aga Khan Centre will be a newly permanent home for the Institute of Ismaili Studies the Aga Khan University's Institute for the Study of Muslim Civilizations and the UK Office of the Aga Khan Foundation. The first time um, it was suggested to us that we should look at developing a site on this estate, to be honest I was a bit sceptical because King's Cross had a reputation as not a very nice area and it really took some brave imagination to see what it could possibly be. In Argent, the developers had a great vision for a mixed-use development that's totally unrecognisable from what it was 10 years ago. The Aga Khan Centre is in the King's Cross development, which is part of the Knowledge Quarter, a one-mile radius of institutions devoted to the study uh, and exhibition of uh, ideas and information in North London. King's Cross is a very important site for us. In the 19th century, it was a hub of economic activity. It was a place where uh, goods came from across the United Kingdom to go out to the rest of the world. Um, what's important now in the 21st century, we're living in a knowledge economy, and it's a place where institutions are coming together, where ideas are mingling, and we want to be a part of that conversation. Design architect of this building is Marquis and Associates. Professor Markey has an um, amazing ability to work with light and form and his buildings look very simple and it's only when you work on them that you realise how complex it is to make something look simple. The Aga Khan Center uh, is our third project for His Highness and the AKDN. The two others are uh, the Delegation Building in Ottawa and the Aga Khan Museum in Toronto. Uh, in our office, we are calling this the Trilogy. And if there is commonality uh, between the three projects, we would say is a certain modernity uh, which responds to the external environment, to the Western world on the outside. But on the inside, there's a very unique ambiance that is created, which is a nod to uh, Islamic culture and design. The Aga Khan Center is carefully planned vertically. There's 10 different levels in the building. It starts uh, at the ground floor with the public realm, and then uh, the stack above has uh, teaching spaces. And the library is in the center of the vertical stack. And on top of that are four levels uh, for each of the res respective institutions. And then the top floor is a celebratory floor. The unique feature of the Aga Khan Center are the series of six gardens, one on every face of the building, which travel uh, from the second level all the way up through the roof. Some very intimate in scale and some that are larger. The Chahar Bagh Garden was requested to be inspired by the Maghreb and Spain. And so we looked at um, the, of course, the Alhambra and the Court of Oranges in Cordoba. And we thought, this is a space that does not have a view out. It has very little soil depth. 
It's on the ninth floor of a building. Perhaps that is our inspiration, is not necessarily the garden of the Alhambra, but the chamber of the two sisters, where a garden is described in poetry. And that became the key to our solution for this project. There's another very key important feature of this building, which is a little bit more intangible, which is light. And you will see that uh, the building on the exterior has uh, a lot of glass, but the glass is treated with 47% uh, cer white ceramic frit, and it gives a very important kind of texture and lightness from the outside, but on the inside, uh, the light gets filtered in uh, through the ceramic frit. In Japanese architecture, we still enjoy a sense of craftsmanship, uh, using the latest technology, uh, using modern materials, and that gives uh, the building kind of a unique tactility and a unique scale. Geometric patterning is a very uh, important and key feature of Islamic architecture and oftentimes uh, in traditional uh, Islamic architecture this was done in carved stone, carved wood, and the pattern appears in uh, different shapes and forms. In all of our three projects, for His Highness the Aga Khan and the AKDN, uh, we actually designed a pattern uh, specific for that building. And the pattern itself is generated from an octagon, uh, an eight-sided geometry. And by connecting the points, it creates a star. And that uh, motif repeats itself in different shapes and forms uh, on the glass, on the balustrade, in the carpet, in the ceiling. Mackie and Associates have brought a real ambition to this project and what they have given us is an incredibly strong concept with all the spaces around the atrium. They've given us beautiful outdoor spaces. They've paid attention to how we wanted to work in quiet spaces. Um, they've given us light everywhere and a myriad of other fantastic details and what we like to think it's a little bit of Japanese sensibility in London. The project required a huge team of uh, designers, engineers, specialists, and we worked really all very closely together over the last six years. It's also been, I think, for the contractor BAM, who we have to be grateful for their incredible efforts in achieving what is an ambitious project of the um, highest level of quality. There are four kinds of users of the buildings. There are, I think, first and foremost, students uh, at the two academic institutions, the faculty and the staff of those institutions, uh, as well as the Aga Khan Foundation, and the wider public. The Aga Khan Center will be uh, an, an institution that is open to the public at certain times. Um, there will be six Islamic gardens that the public can tour, but at the same time, we'll have a very active uh, program of exhibitions, uh, lectures and other kinds of events where we can interact with the public and they can interact with us. We cooperate throughout the building between the three institutions. We will come closer. There are open spaces where we will meet each other and I think that will affect both teaching and research in the new building. The new library will in fact offer a number of new opportunities. For the first time we shall be able to house all of our collections, including our rare collection of manuscripts, in one place. That will really provide a first-time opportunity for us to share these unique resources with scholars worldwide and lay the ground for further progress in the field of Ismaili and Shi'i studies. The ultimate joy of the architect comes when the building is occupied by its users and we hope that this will generate a new sense of uh, collaboration and a kind of synergy between the different institutions.
The Aga Khan Center is a gift from His Highness the Aga Khan and the Ismaili community that's been based in the UK for over 40 years, four generations. It's a public symbol of our commitment to London, to the UK, and to its connectivity to the wider world of ideas uh, and people that we work with.